Hey there, you are wondering why does he wear a deerstalker cap? Well, the reason for that is that it is a very British piece of clothing and today I'm going to talk about a very British pen. First of all, I'd like to tell you how I got this pen. It was a pretty expensive pen, but I was able to get it at 50% of the recommended retail price because it was the last model in the shop where I bought it. Now. Which shop was that? Usually I don't tell where I got the pen, but in this case I really do want to do so. Uh, I got it at La Couronne du Comte, which is a uh, fountain pen and pen store and web store in the Netherlands. And I've ordered a lot of stuff from these people, pens, ink, paper, accessories. And every time I've had, you know, I've experienced excellent service, I've gotten expert advice, so I can really, really recommend this shop. Uh, I'll give you a small example. The pen I wanted to, uh, uh, on this pen I'm going to talk about, I wanted to have an italic medium nib that unfortunately was not in stock at La Corona Corn. They had to order it, and then uh, apparently the um, manufacturer of the pen didn't have it in stock. They had to order it. It took a while. The shop owner, where I bought the pen, kept me informed. Uh, made sure it arrived, you know, the nib, there were some issues, but he made sure it arrived. He he kept me fully posted on what was going on, um, and I was impressed. And then, once the pen was sent out uh, by the shop, the Dutch mail uh, system almost screwed up. I told the shop owner, of course, that was not his fault, it was just Dutch mail uh, being uh, uh, not exactly cooperative. He phoned them. And that very same day the pen was delivered, no problems whatsoever. So in other words, I mean, I like the shop. That's, that's, that's all there's to it. So if you're in the market for a pen or ink or whatever, and especially if you live in Europe, La Couronne du Comte, Google it, you'll find it. I'm not affiliated with these people, but if people do something right, then I think you should definitely tell others about it. Okay. The pen. Well... The pen is rather fascinating, and it comes in a very, very fascinating box, which is really heavy, I can tell you. And the box looked like this. You may think that's a, a bit of a bland box. It looks a bit like a coffin. Yeah, I know, but I'll open it up, just to show you how awesome it is. Because in the box is another box. See that? Conway Stewart. Oh yeah. When you open that up, you'll see a couple of things. First of all, a nice little booklet. Now I love little booklets. Here we have the history of Conway Stewart, uh, the different pens they make, etc. But the very finest thing is at the final page. Here we got some handwritten stuff. I didn't put it in. This is the way you get it. If you look at the other side, now you can't really see it, anyway. Uh, this is handwritten. So it says, Conway Stewart, Certificate of Authenticity, Model 100 Series, Type Fountain Pen, Color Yellow Whirl, Individual Pen ID Number 371-119, because these pens are individually numbered, uh, and there's actually uh, two signatures from the Conway Stewart authorized signature, and the maker signature, and the date. So, uh, that's the amount of, of quality control these people uh, you know, put into their pens, which I think is fairly impressive. On to the box. Some protective covering. You take it out and you see another box. Now, I think the first response most Dutch people will have to this is, Hey, Wiebertje! Wiebertje is a type of Dutch uh, sweet, which has exactly this shape and the same color. Of course, it would be sacrilege to call this Vibacher, but in any case, this nice diamond-shaped box is, I think, extremely awesome. But before we get to that, there's some other stuff in here. There is, again, a signed, I mean manually signed, uh, quality control sheet. I have some trouble with the lighting here, but it's uh, signed by hand, quality control. And you get this. I thought it was another booklet, but in fact, it is a silver polishing cloth which is very, very nice. Then, 
the Vibache, and this little box here. Um, the material, I'm not absolutely sure what this is, but it, it feels cool. You open it up, and then you see the actual pen. I'll take it out. Look at this. Oh yeah. So, here we have the Conway Stewart Model 100. This is the yellow swirl. There's a lot of Model 100s, but this is the yellow swirl type. And I think it's absolutely awesome. I mean, look at this detailing, look at this deco, look at this design. It's awesome. This is a resin pen, which means it's not very heavy. It reminded me a little bit of the um, Namiki Falcon. I think this one is a little bit heavier but it is a light pen. Nevertheless, it's extremely pleasant to the, to the touch. It is pleasant to hold. I'll go through it, and then I'll show you how it writes. Let's start with the cap. There's some interesting stuff going on there. We have the clip. Again, we have a Vibo chip, so this is an, a, a diamond-shaped thing at the end of the clip. That's one of the, the Conway Stewart trademarks. Gold trimmed. Uh, it has the Conway Stewart logo on there. You, you, you can't see it, but that's believe me, it's there. The three gold bands another Conway Stewart uh, trademark and at the back of the gold bands there's some information it says CS it says 750 and uh, because it's 18 karat gold and there's I think some gold marks on there so uh, I'll assume it is truly gold um, okay now one thing that's a bit typical is this black thing some people have complained about that because the entire pen is red the only thing that's black on here is the feed and then at the very tip we have this pointy thing which is black. It would have been nicer if it would have been the same color red as the whole body, but whatever. I'll be honest with you, I don't really care that much. It's just a concern that some people have raised. Yeah, it's black, yeah, it detonates a little, but whatever. I don't really care. Um, at the end here, so the barrel, uh, we've got another gold band and another pointy thing, which makes for a very balanced pen. So the clip is... Uh, flexible but pretty stiff uh, which should keep the pen in place and another good thing about the cap which I really like is that it's a screw-on cap I always like that because you just have to pull off caps and more than once I've had a pen in a pen pouch try to pull it out and because the cap just pulls off you end up with the cap in your hand and the pen still in the pouch which is pretty much impossible with this pen because you know you have to unscrew it to open it which I'll do right now and I'll show you the gorgeous nib 18 karat gold, nice detailing, it has the Conway Stewart logo, it also says Conway Stewart, uh, it says 18 karat, and um, it actually says gold, should you doubt it, and it says I am, because it's an italic medium nib. Uh, one thing that may be interesting to note, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but there is no breather hole. So apparently the, the, the feed works so well that a breather hole was deemed unnecessary, and I have to say I've not had a single flow issue. So apparently one can really do without the breather hole. Okay, then the grip section, smooth, no texture, uh, but a nice sort of rim at this end, uh, which makes sure your fingers won't slip off onto the nib. Also, uh, something I really like is that a lot of these screw-on pens, when I hold them, I have issues with the uh, screw threads because I tend to hold my pens a little high and if you do that, if you hold them this highly uh, then you are sort of touching uh, the threads and that can be a little sharp to the touch with this pen I've had no such issues in fact the pen is so well designed and balanced that I hold it <laughs> the same way normal people would so like this and as you can see I have large hands but this is a big pen it's not huge I wouldn't call this oversized but it is a, a nice and big pen so I don't actually have to post it to hold it comfortably in fact I don't post it because the cap doesn't slide on that far this is what you get so if you write with it post it then look that's that's huge although it's light enough to me that's a bit too much so I write with this unposted Okay, so in the grip we have another gold ring, another gold band, um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, have another look at this gorgeous design. I really like these yellow swirls. They really, you know, accent uh, the red resin of the pen. Um, the body itself has something engraved. You can probably see it just a little bit. It says Conway Stewart 
uh, 100 series and again it has the individual serial number uh, and it also says made in England hence the Deerstalker and screwing it at first I thought this would be a piston filler because of this little knob it looked like like this would be a you know a screw like thing to move the piston but it's not it is a converter uh, filled pen I don't really care in fact I think a converter is easier to clean out than a, a piston filler if you change ink so it's it's absolutely fine with me the good thing is that this is a screw in converter I only have one other pen my Visconti Opera Elements which has a screw-in converter, but what I like about this is that you can't accidentally pull it out. And that's good, because if you do, I've had that once, it fell onto the floor, ink splattered all over my trousers, and it wasn't a pretty sight. So in this case, it's pretty much impossible, because you really screw it in place, you can't accidentally pull it out. Um, so there we go. Uh, it holds a decent amount of ink, which is always useful. And that's it. So... I think a writing sample is in order. I'm sure you're really interested in seeing how it writes. The italic nib gives you some interesting line variation, uh, more line variation than an ordinary nib. For those of you not familiar with the idea, an italic nib is a nib that's cut off straightly. So where a, a regular fountain pen has a type of rounder thing going on at the end of the tines, this one is just cut off flat like that. And that makes sure that if you, if you hold it like this, if you write, if you draw lines like that, then you get very narrow lines, and if you write lines lines like this, then you get very broad lines. Now that sounds a little bit abstract, don't worry, I'll show you that in the writing sample in a second. So, on to the writing sample, and after that I'll upload a few still shots from the writing sample so you can check it out at your leisure. And that's it. So, I hope this was useful, and um, see you later. Okay, writing with the Conway Stewart model 100. Here we go. So, model 100, the ink is uh, Gerbin. Terre de Feu. As you can see, I can, even though this is an italic, I can uh, write at a fairly normal speed. My writing speed is fairly high, but I can, there is no skipping here. So let's start with a simple writing sample. As you can see, there is some line variation, which is, of course, what an italic is pretty much all about. So if I do this, then I get these really nice fine lines. And if I do that, then I get some really wide lines. And even within those wide lines, there is an 18 karat gold nib. So there is some flex to it, making very, very versatile nib and pen. Um, because this is an italic, uh, in theory I have to move the camera away a little bit, it's in the way of my writing. Um, because it is an italic, this is not the best calligraphy I've ever done, but it is in theory possible to use this as a calligraphy type of pen. It is a little flexy, so that is actually something you don't want to have in calligraphy of this type. But as you can see, you get a nice line variation, and that is uh, a good thing. Um, it lays down a very nice even amount of ink. It may skip an, uh, a little bit, uh, depending on how exactly I put it on the paper. You can see that, that right there, um, but that is probably because of me. I have to find the sweet spot of this nib, which, because it's an italic, is a very, fairly narrow spot, narrower than with a regular round nib. And so that's, if it, the pen skips it's, or skids, it's probably 
my fault because I have rotated it too much or not enough. In any case, as you can see, it holds up with fast rising fairly well. Not trying to be legible there, just being quick. As you can see, there is no skipping. So, yeah, um, I would say this is an amazing pen. Very, very nice nib. As you can see, some really nice shading. That's, of course, property of the ink, but the italic sure helps to bring that out. Um, and I'm really, really satisfied with this pen. So, I would say, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.